Welcome to our Recap Plus channel. Today we will watch a recap movie is called Spartacus, released in 1960. This is a spoiler content video. So please turn on the subtitle and let's start the story. The movie starts in 73 before century during the last century of the Roman Republic. Thousands of people are born enslaved to either the privileged class known as patricians or the wealthiest of the commoners, known as plebeians. One exceptionally strong slave in the rock mines of Libya, a Thracian named Spartacus, is regularly whipped for displaying his intelligence and pride. In his latest act of defiance, Spartacus viciously bites the ankle of a Roman centurion when he tries to stop Spartacus from helping another slave who fell carrying a load of rocks. Spartacus is tied down, seemingly until he dies and rots. One day, Badiatus, who trained slaves to become gladiators, purchases Spartacus and several other slaves for his ludus in Capua. There, Badiatus announces that each man will be taught to fight to the death strategically, for the pleasure of patricians who enjoy the sport. The training proves as dehumanizing as the mines, each slave is branded, mercilessly instructed by head trainer Marcellus, and kept in cells. Spartacus tries to befriend Ethiopian gladiator Draba but soon learns that the men refuse to ally, knowing that they may be forced to kill each other in the gladiatorial arena. One night, Spartacus is presented to the slave woman Verinia. Badiatus and Marcellus, knowing that Spartacus has never had a woman, watch from a grate above his cell as Verinia stoically undresses. Their laughter disgusts Spartacus, and after he refuses to mistreat the young woman, Badiatus takes her away as punishment for not acting as a man. Over the next several weeks, Spartacus excels at gladiatorial skills and falls further in love with Verinia. Marcellus attempts to derail their attraction, but the couple manages to exchange furtive touches. One day, Marcus Licinius Crassus, a patrician in competition with the plebeian Gracchus for control of the Roman Senate, arrives at Capua along with his wife Lady Helena, sister-in-law Claudia and her fiancé, Marcus Glabrus. To celebrate the betrothal, Crassus insists that a gladiatorial match be arranged, ignoring Badiatu's concern that forcing the slaves to fight to the death in their own camp could cause an uprising. Helena and Claudia choose four slaves, including Spartacus and Draba, to fight, and order them to be scantily clad in loincloths rather than armor. As the matches begin, the patricians banter happily, undisturbed by the desperation of the fighting men. Spartacus listens from the holding cell as a friend is killed, then enters into battle against Draba. Draba overcomes Spartacus, but, unwilling to kill his compatriot, instead attacks Crassus and is immediately speared by a guard and cruelly finished off by Crassus himself. Another day or two later, during mealtime in the eatery area, Spartacus later hears that Crassus has bought Verinia. Marcellus smacks Spartacus across the mouth with his whip for breaking the no-talking rule. Spartacus can no longer control his rage, and attacks Marcellus, shoving his face in a pot of stew, drowning him. Emboldened, the other slaves follow suit starting a huge riot at the Ludus and escape. They steal various brass and steel weapons from a nearby cart and form an army that travels across the countryside, looting landowners and freeing slaves, who then join the swelling ranks. Word soon spreads to Rome of the slave rebellion, causing outrage in the Senate. While Crassus is away on business, Gracchus cannily challenges Glabrus, now head of the Roman garrison, to lead some of the troops against the slaves, leaving Julius Caesar as temporary chief of the remaining garrison. When Crassus returns, he comprehends immediately that Gracchus plots to keep Glabrus out of Rome, leaving Crassus more vulnerable to attack. Meanwhile, back at Badiatu's home, a crowd of gladiators forces two local patricians to fight in the arena, using torches to spur them into combat. Spartacus makes them stop, telling them they're not meant to be as cruel as the Romans. He instead inspires his troops to form a united front that can sweep across the country, freeing other slaves and eventually escape over the sea to their homelands. In one town, Spartacus is elated to find Verinia, who has escaped and now confesses her love. Back in Rome, while Crassus admires his new body slave, Antoninus, Gracchus schemes with Badiatus, who blames Crassus for Spartacus' rebellion. Soon, Spartacus' army settles at Mount Vesuvius, where an escaped Antoninus impresses Spartacus, who longs for an education, with his talent for both music and poetry. One day, Tigranes, a representative of Cilician pirates, visits to offer the slaves support. Spartacus trades the army's riches for 500 ships, to await the army on the east coast of Italy. Tigranes agrees to the trade, and when he wonders aloud why Spartacus believes he can defeat the mighty Roman garrison, the former slave replies that, unlike soldiers, his men are not afraid to die, since even death is preferable to a life in chains. Soon after, Glabrus arrives at the rebels' base camp at Vesuvius and, underestimating the intelligence of the slaves, fails to prepare his troops adequately. Spartacus is able to destroy the garrison and capture Glabrus, whom he sends back to the Senate with the message that the army will not be stopped. 
Crassus is forced to banish Glabris and retire in shame, never to be seen or heard of again. Throughout the winter, Spartacus' ever-growing group crosses the country, many dying along the way. In the spring, Spartacus is overjoyed to learn that Verinia is pregnant. Meanwhile, Gracchus convinces the Senate to name Caesar as commander of the garrison and to send two legions to destroy Spartacus. When no one volunteers to lead the legions against Spartacus, Gracchus is forced to ask Crassus, who is delighted to head the campaign to restore order to Rome. Later, Gracchus reveals to Caesar that he has maneuvered the sale of the Salesian ships to Spartacus, knowing that Spartacus' triumph will spell defeat for Crassus. Although Spartacus celebrates upon reaching an encampment a mere 20 miles away from the Cilician ships, Tigranes soon arrives, with the news that Pompey and Crassus have conspired to surround Spartacus' army, necessitating the withdrawal of the ships. Spartacus realizes that Crassus is forcing him to attack Rome, which will allow the patrician to use all the troops at his disposal against them. Dismissing Tigranes' offer to smuggle Spartacus and Antoninus, now his closest aid, to freedom, Spartacus instead stirs his troops to march against Rome. At the same time in Rome, the Roman Senate elects Crassus as head consul and leader of the legions, and he vows to destroy Spartacus and restore order to the empire. The armies soon come within fighting distance of each other, and Crassus, single-minded in his fear of and hatred for Spartacus, pays Badiatus to identify the former slave on the battleground. Just before the battle, Spartacus tells Verinia that his only prayer is for his son to be born free and to learn about his father's cause. During the final battle, within a few hours, Crassus' trained troops have overcome the slave army, and Crassus announces to the survivors that they will be spared crucifixion if they identify Spartacus. Spartacus stands to speak, but before he can sacrifice himself, Antoninus stands and declares, I am Spartacus. One by one, each slave follows suit, choosing death over betraying the man who brought him freedom. Enraged, Crassus orders them all to be crucified during a long march, lining the Appian Way road from Brindusia to Rome with their bodies. He also finds Verinia, clutching Spartacus' newborn son, and sends her to his estate. Along the march, Crassus recognizes Antoninus and then, upon spotting Spartacus, guesses he may be his enemy, and orders the two men be kept alive until they reach his estate. There, he banishes Gracchus to the country, intending to use him in the future for his popularity with the rabble. Soon after, Badiatus experiences what Gracchus terms a bad case of dignity and refuses to identify Spartacus, and instead plots with Gracchus to steal Verinia from the estate in order to irritate Crassus. Crassus dotes on Verinia, whose love he believes will prove his superiority over Spartacus but she vows never to stop loving Spartacus. Meanwhile, Spartacus mourns Verinia and his son, who he assumes has died. When Crassus confronts Spartacus, the slave spits in his face, spurring the dictator to order him to fight Antoninus to death, with the victor to be crucified. Spartacus and Antoninus fight valiantly, each trying to save the other from a more painful death, and Spartacus soon triumphs. After murmuring that he loved Spartacus like a father, Antoninus dies, and Spartacus proclaims that he will come back, and he will be millions. Crassus, fearful even in his victory, orders Spartacus crucified at the gates to Rome. Meanwhile, Badiatus brings Verinia and the boy to Gracchus, who presents them with falsified papers that will allow them freedom, then kills himself. In the final scene, as Verinia leaves Rome, she catches sight of Spartacus on the cross. In his last moments of life, Spartacus sees Verinia lift his son and hears her declare that the boy, now free, will never forget his father. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications then leave a like to help the Recap Plus channel out. Thank you for watching.